Welcome, welcome, Solara here again. I'm here to do another short form reading. This is kind of my cycle breaker series, as I mentioned in this uh, in the first reading I did. Um, this is a time where many um, cycles are wanting to come to a close. New energies have entered, there are new collective timelines um, that are available frequentially that were not before um, and to to get to those higher ways of being then we must alchemize everything that has kept us out and most of the time what's kept us out is fear you know fear the programming the ways we think about ourselves the things that others think about us that we've kind of acquired as being our own thoughts um, as well as you know the spells which Again, the spells can't really stick unless we have the internal energy to match them, meaning that somebody can't cast a spell to make you feel as if you're worthless and you don't deserve a higher timeline if somewhere along the line you don't harbor those uh, beliefs and feelings about yourself too. So while it's important to return that, that energy back to, um, you know, beings who want to, uh, you know, fuck with you, <laughs> it's important to send that energy back so they take karmic responsibility for what it is that they're miscreating. Um, it's also really important that the, the, the best way to armor yourself against those spells in general where they will just bounce back to those beings anyway is to be so rooted in who you are that those kinds of energies can't enter into your fields and have a field day with you because they don't exist so anytime they come towards you they can't have an effect because they're a lie it's like um my kids um my kids, we're, we're very sarcastic, and we, we we have a lot of fun with one another. We we um, we poke fun at one another a lot for all kinds of reasons. Our star signs, you know, that we're very comfortable. My kids and I, we love one another, and we joke around a lot. And so, one of my my um, son's favorite things to say to my daughter because she has such a big appetite, and it doesn't go anywhere right and so he'll call her a fatty right because it's so not true that it can't offend her right it can't offend her because she knows that's not who or what she is um and when if she were a person who was struggling with her weight i was a child who struggled with my weight you called me a fatty it would it would cause me to crumble right so but that's because that energy, that story lived within me. It doesn't live within her, so it doesn't have an effect. So he can poke fun on her and be sarcastic because it's not true. And so it doesn't have the ability to set her on a course of destruction, right? So that's just an example of how a spell can only work on you if internally you have the matching story and a mental and emotional energy that would take you on the path of destruction that the spell wants to take you down. So the most effective thing you can do is uh, train yourself out of the lies. Because even um, if somebody were to call me as a child, you know, fat, chubby, I was. That was the truth. And, but I'd been taught to be ashamed of that, but there was nothing to be ashamed of. I liked my food. I like food. I like to eat. Yes, I was doing a lot of emotional eating because of the trauma I was going through also, but that's just the fact, you know? So if I put on a whole bunch of weight now, I wouldn't feel the same way as I did back then because I'd be enjoying it. I like to eat. There's nothing wrong with that. We're not all supposed to be, you know, one size fits all. We're, we're not. There are very, um, the, the false matrix wanted us all having this one standard of beauty um, because it would mess with our galactic origins and truth. Because the reality is there are some beings from certain galactic lines who are bigger. They're bigger boned, they've got bigger forms, bigger structures, and you've got ones that are more wispy, you know? And it literally has to do um, not with how they eat and yada yada and, and material things. It literally has to do, just like you see it um, happening uh, on the earth planes with, you know, when people say, oh, I'm, I'm big boned because it runs in, in the family. That's the similar thing that you can get through um, 
you know, galactic heritage also, right? So um, just a tidbit of information there. To. Let's get into, I'm going to, I did this for the other one, so I'm going to go and do it for this one too. The first reading, I went into my energy oracle to kind of establish kind of a theme of what wants to be spoken on here. As I mentioned before, these are your cycle breaking readings. These are the situations you might find yourself um, wanting to alchemize, the really tough energies, stagnant stories that it's time for you to break out of once and for all or to go into another level. We're going to talk about it and see what guidance comes out for you, okay? Door to personal healing and happiness. Are you a self-saboteur? Do you get to a cycle, the end of a cycle journey? Is that the bottom? I'm sorry, I was going through the decks. I thought something else had flipped around, but it didn't. We've got door to personal healing. That's number seven, three and four. That's the marriage, the union of energies coming together to create an, um, an exit point. And then we have journey. Okay, so um, this, is, uh, th this is the energy of, of someone who is being asked to alchemize their own self-sabotage. So what do I mean by that? Um, you have everything that you need um, to move into this next cycle, but um, you, you're, you are doubting your ability to move forward for whatever reason, okay? Um, you're doubting your ability to move forward for some of you because with this number two energy, which is connected to the high priestess, you don't see where you're going. You don't see how you're going to get there. You don't see, um, you know, your way out. You don't see definitively what the plan is. Um, you know, you don't know. You're just kind of uh, trusting your intuition. And um, in that, it's like you're teetering back and forth. You know it's time to move forward. You feel it's time to move forward, but then you question your ability to do so. And here's the thing. If your own soul has told you it's time for you to move forward, then everything you need, you already have to do that. The provision has already been made, but sometimes when you've been stuck in really tough cycles, it's, it requires more trust in self and more faith in um, moving in the dark in order to kind of alchemize all the times you betrayed yourself in the past. I hope that makes sense. So sometimes we get very stuck with this idea that we're blocked because of other people. And yes, that happens. But once we realize that the only way and reason another person could block us to begin with was because of our own thoughts, our own feelings, our own relationship with ourselves, our worth, our ability, our capability, um, our resources, what's available. Once we realize that actually that's the root of the issue, then what other beings try to do to put in our path to block us becomes a non-issue. It's like what I, there's a reason why I was bringing up that story, you know, with my, my children earlier on. When um, you no longer are blocked internally and you are fully on board with your ability to move forward and to open and to, for doors to open that need to be open just based upon um, your not use so the word I'm hearing is your eligibility um, and you're eligible not because you're super special or I'm super special you're eligible because you've done the work you're eligible also because even if you don't realize it you've been living in low timelines in this lifetime you've already graduated from and so when you choose to jump past the limitations that have held you bound to those timelines you access where you always were supposed to be and you have such support in that space and in that place because it's actually cosmically where you belong. But in order to get there, you must overcome the fears within that kept you stuck in those timelines for so long to begin with. You must also learn how to balance um, the way that you are moving in your masculine and your feminine energy, meaning that 
There is a time to go. There is a time to take action. There is a time to move in the energy. And there's a time to let things um, become established. There's a time to rest. There's a time to let things settle. There's a time to be in a very um, passive um, stage of receiving. Okay, and maybe for some of you, the reason why you uh, find it also difficult to come out of this position of like wavering and teetering is because you want to go when you need to chill or you want to chill when it's time to go. And so it's time for you to really um, tune into the information that's coming through and to be true be true to it so if your guidance is to sit down and to do nothing and to let something alchemize then you do that if your guidance is to get the energy moving by doing something then you do that but what you don't do is try to apply old methods of moving the energy that are based upon um like insecurity and fear and guilt and shame, like I'm supposed to be doing this, I have to do this, you know, kind of thing. Um, you need to get out of that um, energy of like um, productivity or applying more force to something is going to get the door open. No, what's going to get the door open right now is such um, faith and um, self-awareness and loyalty to self. Seven of Swords. Um, I'm not taking it. I'm, I don't take flyers with this, but Seven of Swords. Um, this is all of the things that uh, trick you in your own mind. Okay, so it can be other people, of course, but the, the, I've said this before and I'm going to say this again. What we are entering into now as we break ourselves out of some of the gnarliest of cycles, it is Armageddon, but it's a, a, it's one of the greatest battles within ourselves. Now we are conquering all of the mindsets, all of the thoughts, all of the energies, and even the entities that have had a field day within us internally that have kept us stuck in timelines, that have kept us spellbound, that kept us not knowing that this was going on. Now it's like we've dealt with the stories of how we got there. We've seen, we've alchemized so much. And now to get to the seed point, to completely uproot the energy, we've really got to come face to face with um, the inception energy. We have to battle. Um, and the only way we can properly and effectively battle is if we know who we are. We're so rooted in who we are in our minds and in our hearts that when those energies try to come and present themselves as being real, even if they once upon a time connect to who we were or the false persona we took on when we were wounded we um, we give that back so this is like um, and at the bottom of the deck we have the eight of swords so this is some real um, mind fuckery that you are being called to overcome okay it has to do with the ways you deceive yourself okay the ways you deceive yourself or the ways that you are deceived because some of these things, and I've talked about them before, you know, some of the things that um, have been running our systems are uh, like, not some of them, but things that have been running our systems have been parasitic energies, entities, and consciousnesses. And these parasites even manifest themselves in physical form and live within our bodies. And they have their own consciousness that have, have been running us. Okay, so we think that we're thinking in accordance with our truth, but really we are um, we are being commanded by these uh, consciousnesses whose main objective and goal is for their agenda to be carried through. So, for example, I, I use I use this example when I spoke about this. Um, you know, if a parasite needs sugar in order to multiply, in order to to um, to uh, to lay eggs, you know, in order to thrive in your system, it's going to constantly make you think that you have a sugar craving or a sugar addiction. And you think it's you when you have a whole other consciousness dictating what it needs to survive and thrive in your reality at your expense. You get what I'm saying? So that's a, a very simple um, idea. But uh, these things come in and they want to live and thrive in your reality and use your energy and your consciousness and your um, access to be able to do that. 
okay so be very aware this is why um, knowing who you are divinely it's so important when you know who you are divinely then when these energies try to get you to play with your mind to get you to do things think things make decisions based upon certain mindsets and old programs and you can be like aha caught you bitch that ain't me so now I've seen you you've got to go because the minute that you see that it's not you you're, you've already won. The minute you see that the energy is flowing through you and using you um, to promote its own agenda, you've already won. The spell's already been broken. 13, 13 on my clock as I say that. You've already won. So now that thing has to, um, it, it's already on its way out. It's already on its way out once you've already identified it, okay? Let me cut the cards first. Here we do. Here we have it again. Page of Wands. Page of Wands. It just came out twice <laughs> in the first reading. Um, the Page of Wands. This is the energy that's coming out right now because it's showing us that there is a new chapter to an old story. And when I mean when I say an old story, I'm not talking about an old story like you are um, holding on to something that you don't want to hold on to. No, this energy has been coming out very specifically to speak about the fact that you are, we are, many of us are reconnecting with timelines and storylines that we've left off from previous incarnations and we haven't been able to access these storylines, these truths, these abilities because we were so heavily under frequential the, the densities and the uh, lower vibrations of the false matrix that made it impossible for us to live at that level. So remember I said not long ago, I said um, that some of you are um, are stuck, have been stuck in timelines that you already graduated from, right? And you've already uh, lived in higher timelines and truths on the earth planes, okay? Um, and it's time for you to reaccess those lessons so you can continue your evolution um, that you came here to accomplish on the earth planes. So um, you are reconnecting to an old spiritual story that you've left behind and haven't been able to connect to in a while because of the frequential fuckery. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so the overarching theme, the Eight of Wands, all speed, um, all, all is a go, um, full speed ahead. That's what I'm hearing, full speed ahead. Um, Eight of Wands is Sagittarius energy. That's the zero to nine degrees of Sagittarius. It's when um, everything begins to break free for your passage forward. And this can happen very, very, um, very quickly. So this is showing me that uh, whoever this reading is for, whatever it is that you're trying to break through to the other side of, um, you are pretty much, you're like on, you're, you're right there. You're like on the brink. And um, what is required is for you to stabilize um, your, your energy, stabilize your faith. Um, that's what the Sagittarius energy, your faith, um, your faith in who you are and the more that you anchor that in you're going to find that whatever densities it is that has kept you in this pl in this place when you're supposed to be here um all of a sudden it's like um all of those timelines are just going to like dominoes and you're going to get to where you're supposed to be and it's going to happen um even for you uh you know it's going to even though you want it, I should say, it's still going to happen faster than maybe you thought was possible. And that's just showing you how, um, how, I don't want to say how far back you are, because it's not about that. Um, you are exactly where you're supposed to be, but it's going to show you how, how evolved you actually are. It's going to show you how much you've actually always deserved. Um, and it's going to open up to you so much of why you felt the way you felt um, on this earth plane, why you felt out of place in your life, why you felt out of place with people, out of alignment, why you felt that, um, you know, not that 
the sense of not belonging. It's going to, to help you make so much more sense of that. Um, in the challenge position, we have the Eight of Swords. So um, it came out before it's coming out again. The Eight of Swords, this is the this is the zero to nine degrees Gemini, which is very interesting because this is the opposition energy for the Eight of Wands, right? So uh, Sagittarius is, this is the zero to nine. The Eight of Wands is the zero to nine degrees Sagittarius. The Eight of Swords is the zero to nine degrees Gemini, the, their sister signs. So in other words, to get to the Eight of Wands, you must alchemize the Eight of Swords. You must alchemize all of those mindsets that have had you limited and stuck in prisons, stuck in uh, ways of thinking about yourself that only would cater to you being in the lower timeline that you don't belong in. Okay, so I've shared this before. I'm going to share it again. I think I shared it with the you guys um, on my other channel for the full moon in Aquarius um, reading. You, you are, um, sorry, when you are operating, some of you, when you are operating in your full multidimensional infinite potential gifts, abilities, you are able to close your eyes, connect with a feeling, see the place you want to be, whether it's a country, a place, a space, or with a person, you're able to close your eyes and be there instantly. You are. Okay? This isn't for everyone. This is for people who have gone through the, the, the deep alchemy um, of being on this planet in this density and have mastered the ability to bring their gift onto the planet. They've done that already before. And so living here in this time, in this density, when they've already uh, graduated from these lessons has literally been torture. So this isn't for everyone because some people, you will graduate into that, but you haven't already done so. This is a message for someone who's already done this. Okay, so imagine your soul knows you have the ability and the capacity to do that and that you then... Um, every time you try to manifest something, you can't do it because um, you fall into despair. Well, part of the reason you're falling into despair is for, for one thing, you believe you can't do it, right? But more importantly, you're falling into despair because somewhere on a soul level, you got used to. You got used to being able to do it. And so for those of you who kind of give up easily with these things or become discouraged easily, maybe it's because, maybe it's not because you don't have the ability, maybe it's because you're beyond this point and your soul knows it and your soul finds it frustrating. But here's the thing, you have to know that about yourself and you have to anchor that in as your truth. So instead of it being, I can't, pull this through I can't bring this forward it has to be um, I'm actually collapsing all of the densities that are not only between me bringing this through but are between me being able to instantly go back to being able to do what it was I was able to do before so I said at the beginning of the last reading, so I'm going to reiterate it here. We have entered into new timelines on this planet, new collective frequencies where things that we weren't able to do before we can do again. So some of you are able to do that and you're bringing it back on the earth planes. You're the pioneers that will be bringing this ability um, back on the earth planes for other beings who have the ability to connect with and for other people who are ready to graduate into this ability to be able to do. You are the way shower of this energy which is why you will have a harder and a tougher time. But once you get over this lesson, this is like a huge ass fucking lesson because um, it's you alchemize many, many. It's like you've moved through a house and you've gotten and you couldn't find the exit point and you've gotten through many, many doors and you're finally at the big ass door that takes you out and now you've just got to figure out the code. Okay, so you didn't get that far. Um, having to figure out your way around that house to get to this door now and not be able to open it. You will get that code. You will walk on through. You were brought to this point for this reason. Okay, so um, this is about um, overcoming every way you have 
limited yourself and you've been limited in your own mind out of your ability to um, break forth into something that's really pretty fucking expansive and on the, these earth planes we would call it possibly miraculous or supernatural but it's not miraculous or supernatural it only appears that way to us because we've been told lied to and said that it's the case when really it's your natural um, self-expression and not only is it your natural express self-expression but you've done it on the earth before and you're revisiting it again page of wands okay so um, what it is that you need to you're, you're missing you're not seeing and you need to have a, a, a better grasp on is the Queen of coins that's beautiful this is the Queen of Pentacles okay so this is all about this is um you know this is uh, Virgo Taurus Capricorn energy I, I'm feeling more Virgo energy through coming through right now with this the Queen of Pentacles is uh, your ability to receive based upon your divine feminine magnetism. Um, so remember I said before with this 34, I said there's something here where you need to really learn how to, um, how to balance your masculine and your feminine energies when it comes to making uh, decisions, right? So sometimes you move when you're not supposed to. You're, you're you're applying too much force when you're supposed to be chilling, or maybe you're chilling because you're afraid and you're procrastinating when you need to take action. Um, right now, it would seem that you need to be more focused on the fact that everything is returning to you as you allow yourself to magnetize it based upon your thoughts. So in other words, it's not a time to be actively maybe pursuing something so much as it is to allow it now to come towards you. It's already here. There's nothing you can do to to make it come. It's already here. You get what I'm saying? Um, all you can do now is allow for it to be birthed. It's, um, you know, I, I don't know what kind of analogy to use, but like you're pregnant and um, there are things you're supposed to do throughout pregnancy to keep yourself healthy. But doing those things when it's time to deliver, it's not going to do anything at that point. Baby's already here. Baby's already the, 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 the sublimation of all the decisions you already made up until that point. Choosing to eat a carrot now and drink some more water and to do some exercises, it, it might help a little bit, but it it's not going to change everything that's already been done and the fact that either way um, baby's coming through what needs to be the focus at this point is not what you're eating etc what needs to be the focus is that you're calm and you're ready to deliver right that you're in the energy to deliver you're holding the Sun this is beautiful so this is also what's also coming through for me is that um, if this is your reading um, you're worried about things that have to do um, with like old world matrix stories that are designed to keep you in survival mode and in that you're missing the fact that you are such a key factor on what is coming next whether it's on the earth planes, in your community, um, your energy somehow is so um, integral in um, some of these next cycles that it's time to, um, to become real on the earth. Um, your ability to rise is, is integral. And so in that, you're protected, you're supported. Okay, so what I mean by that is that sometimes we can get so lost in, in wanting to bring forth something because we, 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 we feel we need it, right? Um, but we forget that as much as we think we need it, the energies um, that are supporting the entirety of the ascension um, knows you need it more than you know you need it. So you're not in it alone. In other words, hope that makes sense. Guidance. Ten of Swords. This is about putting to bed the Eight of Swords. The Ten of Swords is about killing the program. That's what I heard. Kill the program. Kill the program. Black Kyanite. 
that's putting an end to the mental energies that have put you into not only self-destruct, but have put you into a state of, um, have put you into a state of self-isolation or believing um, things about yourself that don't support the fact that you are supported and that you are integral in what is coming next. 8-8 eight, eight energy. I didn't notice that before. 8-8. Eight, 8-8. Eight, eight, eight. Something from the 888 portal um, is being integrated in you. Um, this is also the reason why these mental energies are kicking up. Not for nothing. Anytime a higher... Um, anytime you start to get things back that belonged to you, or a higher, you go into a higher timeline, then there has to be room made for the new codes, the new story, the new um, creation, manifestation. There has to be room made. And so when a new energy enters, it collapses what no longer supports the new timeline. And what we go through um, when we start to worry and fear is the collapsing of those old energies. A lot of the time they're mental energies. It's the collapsing of those and then we get scared when they collapse that the fears that are being destroyed, that are coming down within us, we get afraid that those fears that rise within us are opening the door to the old cycle when really we're connecting with those fears because they're on their way out. But we have to know how we work and we have to realize that as an, a cycle closes out, as an energy leaves, sometimes it will leave kicking and screaming because it wants you to reinvite it back in. It wants you to become more of a stronghold for it. It wants you to grab a hold of that fear and, and let the fear drive you back to the old place instead of you opening the door and being like, I see you, I see what you're doing. I see that you're rising up, but you're rising up because it's time for you to go. So, uh, you know, don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you kind of energy. You know, so um, your guidance is to be very aware that when the fears are rising up, when those um, old thoughts, um, feelings come up that make you feel like you're not going to break through or like you have to do something else in order to get what is already here. You have to open the door and let it go and say, you may not make a home in me anymore. Our time together is through. I'm ending the cycle. I'm breaking up with you. I thank you for the lessons and the wisdom I've accrued about who I am. And now it's time for you to go. Okay? So, that's what I have for you. That was a lot. That's what I have for you. For those of you who are interested in joining me with my on my group session on Saturday, this Saturday the 24th, the group is Alchemizing Anger, Embracing Your Shadow as Your True Protector. Um, I did this group last week and it was, um, it was a good time, so I am reprising it for one last time this Saturday. So if you're interested, I will put the information in the description box below. If you would like to donate to the channel, to my work, to my liberation, um, you can do so at either my PayPal or my Ko-Fi. I put the information in the description box below. If you would like to book with me, um, you can do so through my website or you can email me at solaraspeaks at proton.me. That email is reserved only for bookings, please. Um, you can email me at my other emails for other things, dailyalchemy at gmail.com or solara at solara.info. Um, if you don't hear back from me and you've written me, please assume that I have not seen your email, I have not read your email, and just um, reroute it to me again so it comes back on top, okay? So anyway, I'm sending you guys so much love. I'll see you again soon. Be well.